Today, we'll be looking at how to return from the surface of the moon with the contract, Science Data from the Surface of the Moon. This will require us to return the science we collected at the conclusion of last episode back to Kerbin, and while we're at it, our scientists as well. However, our ride home is currently in orbit about the moon. This means we'll not only look at how to get back to orbit, but how to rendezvous with our command vessel. After which, we'll be looking at how to get our Kerbal safely back home. Let's get started. Taking a look at our contracts here, I got so excited at the conclusion of last episode when this contract came up to explore the moon again, this time returning from the surface, and I thought this would be perfect for what I want to do this episode, except I didn't read it closely enough where it says here we would like to bring a vessel back to Kerbin from the surface of the moon. And with this mission design, the vessel that is currently on the surface of the moon will not come back to Kerbin. It's the command vessel in orbit that comes back to Kerbin. So this contract's not going to get fulfilled. I think returning a Kerbal from the surface should be good enough, but I guess there's a lesson to be learned here to always read these objectives carefully. That said, I still do have this contract from last episode, science data from the surface of the moon, transmit or recover scientific data from the surface of the moon. My original plan was just actually to bring it all back and recover it, but a situation presented itself to give me something that actually I think is worth talking about. And if we take a look here at the top left, we can see we have a solid signal strength. This is even though we are actually on the far side of the moon, the Kerbin is not in sight. And that's because you can see by this little icon, we are bouncing through a relay. And if we take a look, hover over this, it'll tell us that our relay is something called Mission 11. Yeah, you might recall in a previous video, I had this contract to insert a satellite into a polar orbit. Let's take a look at it. There it is right there, and I figured, well, why not put some relay antennas on it and make it a relay? Now, I do want to emphasize this is by no means an ideal orbit for a relay. That will be a topic of a future video, but you can see that it's working for me right now, so um, yeah, I'm kind of happy that I did that. If you go over again to the menu that's up here, you can see that on the comnet here, it's showing none of our comnet. If you click on that, it shows the first hop of the comnet. That is the connection between our lander and our uh, relay right there. If you click on it again, it will show the entire connection all the way back to the KSC. So you can see that, that there's our connection going all the way back to the KSC there. Um, so that's helping us out. That's going to help us do some transmitting. So let's do that. So I'm going to right click onto our lander can and down here you can see that it says there is eight uh, data that has been stored. There's actually lots of data in around this so I got to remember to collect all this together uh, from the science equipment and get it all in one spot before we end up heading back towards Kerbin. But we can review what we have stored in here so we're going to click the button and what we're going to do is we want to look for something that we can transmit. But this here would be a pretty bad choice. This is a surface sample from the moon's Midland craters. It's 120 science if I bring it all the way back to Kerbin, but it's only 41.9 science if I transmit it now. And that's even with the fact that I got a 40% science bonus thanks to my strong signal strength. Uh, these science bonuses only apply to what you're transmitting. So I'm actually getting an extra 40% because my signal strength is so strong. But even with that, that's still a pitiful amount to transmit. So I definitely don't want to transmit that one. We're going to keep it. And what we're going to do is keep moving along until we find something that will be worth transmitting. So like this one here, you can see here it's 24 science, whether I transmit it or recover it. But if I look carefully at this, it's an EVA report from space just above the moon's twin craters. And the contract specifically says transmitter recover scientific data from the surface of the moon. Well, that's no good, <laughs> right? To transmit from the, uh, like, this is not from the surface of the moon. So we, this one's not going to satisfy the contract. We could transmit it if we want, but we'll just keep going. Ah, here we go. An EVA report from the moon's Midland craters. That is on the surface. It's 32 science, whether I recover it or transmit it. So let's hit the transmit button. Off it goes. And over here, you can see our contract has gone green. All right, let's, we're going to keep the rest of this. 
And uh, let's start thinking about the rest of this. Let's return our Kerbal to Kerbin. But of course, the first leg of that is going to be to get to our command vessels. So let's get rid of the relay and let's get rid of all of these lines <laughs> and bring up our command vessel. There it is right there. We're going to set it as a target. And what we want to do is rendezvous with this. Now, I've talked a lot about rendezvous in the past, particularly rendezvousing in low orbit about Kerbin. And in principle, this is really exactly the same thing. So if you want to review the video that's coming up there on the right, go ahead and do that. But the main idea is you want to put yourself into an orbit that is different from your target's orbit so that the two vessels are traveling at different speeds. This will allow you to catch up to your target or your target to catch up to you so you can make your rendezvous. But if we take a look here, you'll notice that this guy's in an orbit of about 12 kilometers. There's not a lot of room below. So if I were to do that, I would want to put myself into an orbit that's higher than my target orbit and launch myself so that I am going to be ahead of it because the target will be in the lower orbit. It will be going faster and that will allow it to catch up to me. So that would mean time warping until the target is around, I don't know, here or so. However, there is something that is a little bit more of a complication here, and that is that our target is not in an equatorial orbit. Moreover, the moon is rotating. Now, the moon rotates very slowly. It takes six days for it to do a complete rotation around, but it's rotating nonetheless. So as the moon rotates, while I time warp, the moon will be rotating, and I might end up moving out from underneath my target's orbit. And that's going to be a problem because... What I really do want to do is launch not only at the right time, but also into the same plane as my target orbit. That will facilitate the rendezvous. Now, to be honest, the inclination here is not particularly high, and also the moon is doesn't rotate particularly quickly. However, you could easily find yourself in a situation where this orbit is much more inclined, or you're on a body that is rotating much more quickly, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you would deal with that situation. So we're going to pretend that that's the situation, that I don't want to do any time warping. I want to launch right now while I am underneath my target's orbit. So what we're going to do is we're going to launch and just get our Apple Apps is to just touch the target orbit of about 12 kilometers. That's going to be our first goal. The second goal is to be in the same plane as the target. Now you can see I need to go a little bit towards the north of east to match up with my target. If you want to get exactly what that heading should be, go over to your target here, uh, switch over to it, open up the orbital info down at the bottom left, click on advanced orbital info, and down here it's giving you the inclination of 4.5 degrees. So I need to launch into an inclined orbit at about 4.5 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna switch back to my lander now, now that I got myself an angle to work with. So I now know I need to launch about four, let's call it five degrees north of east. Now, at the KSC at the launch pad, you're very familiar probably with which way's east and which way's north and which way's south. But here, there's not really all the landmarks to help us out with that. You could figure it out, but it's a little bit puzzling. Which way is east? Which way is north? I don't know, but your nav ball knows. So we're going to use the nav ball to decide which way to go. Uh, north is right here. East is a heading of 90 degrees. This way would be south. This way here would be west. We need to be about 5 degrees north of east. North, the numbers are getting smaller, so that means we need to subtract five degrees from 90 degrees, we need to go off at a heading of about 85 degrees. And down here at the bottom, it actually shows us what our heading is. So that gives us our direction. We need to push towards this direction here. Now, the other thing that's different about launching from the moon and launching, say, from Kerbin, is that on Kerbin, there's an atmosphere that you have to contend with. And because of that, we end up doing this slow pitch over that we call a gravity turn. That is because we are concerned about aerodynamics. But remember, the main goal of achieving an orbit is achieving enough horizontal velocity. You want to get yourself to the horizontal as quickly as you can. 
Because there is no atmosphere around the moon, we don't care about aerodynamics. We don't have to do a slow pitch over. We can do a very fast pitch over and go over to the, towards the horizontal very, very quickly. Now that being said, well, there are cliffs and hills and stuff all around us. We are in the base of a crater. So don't pitch over so quickly that you're going to end up smacking into something. But other than that, you can pitch over as quickly as you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to be throttling up. We're going to push the, towards the top of the nav ball, heading towards an angle of about 85 degrees. Uh, well, that's about it. And we're going to pitch over very quickly. So let's go. We're going to go up for a little bit. And then we're pitching over. No need for a lot of thrust. We have it. Oh, look at that. We're already. Let's bring this over to about 85 degrees. Let's go over even more. Right over. And we're going to put this on orbital. We've got to watch our... Let me get that on 85. There we go. And there we go. Right? As long as I don't crash into the ground, I can keep going towards the horizontal. Again, about 85 degrees is what I want. And I do want to watch that apoapsis. We're going to cut it at about 12 kilometers. If you want, you can reduce your throttle here. So this is going climbing a little bit more slowly. Oh, a little more. <laughs> Once you're kind of up and going, you don't have to panic. You don't have to do things quickly. Once you've cleared all the hills. All right. And 12 kilometers. There we go. So we are going to be at our apoapsis in about two minutes. Let's take a look at the situation. Let's see how we did. So let's see our plane. Yeah, okay. I pitched up probably a little bit too much, but that's okay. We can deal with that in a little bit. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put a maneuver right here at Apoapsis and see what happens. I'm pushing this out and I'm watching those close encounter indicators. And if they happen to come close together, that would be great. Uh, almost looks like they are. I got a purple one, but it's an, they're a different color, so that's not good. Uh, so it doesn't look like I'm going to be getting those close encounter indicators close together. Uh, that's okay. That's what happens. So what we're going to instead do is just go for a circularization. So I'm simply giving myself enough prograde. Oh, I actually got to come back a little bit so that we are about 12 by 12. That's close enough. All right. Uh, you can also do the circularization without using a maneuver node. That is up to you. Uh, you can do it just by uh, just using the numbers that are down here in the orbital info. But of course, this is nice because you do get your countdown burn and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to actually go to half throttle about five seconds before. I'll wait for it to go to zero because it is pretty fine. Reduce throttle here, and really I'm looking at the numbers rather than the node. That's good enough. Close that. Put this on to our north vector and start thinking about, that's for the solar panels, and start thinking about our rendezvous. All right, so what do we got here? Unfortunately, we didn't quite... It's so, it's so funny how these are different colors. It looks like we almost got a rendezvous, but we do not. So we are a little bit there. What do we got? We got about a 1.9 degree inclination difference. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to aim for, let's see, here's us. So this is our first node coming up here. At this descending node, this is where the two orbits cross. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a maneuver here. Now, right now, we're in very similar orbit, so we're not going to catch up to our command vessel, and our command vessel is not going to catch up to us. We're just going to keep spinning around on opposite sides of the moon. That's not what we're going to what we want. But if I give myself a little bit of prograde here, what I'm doing is slowing myself down because I'm putting myself into a higher orbit so that this will allow the lander to catch up to us. And the only reason I'm doing prograde rather than retrograde is because there's really no room below me to go the other way. So as I do this, now notice that, again, this close encounter indicator is not moving. We've seen that in the past, and hopefully you know how to deal with it. What you want to do is move your orbit ahead just a single second until that moves. So there it goes. Now it moved. And now I can give myself some prograde here. 
and you can see now we are getting ourselves an encounter here at this descending node with putting in another 62 meters per second of delta V and while we our encounter speed here is about 66 meters per second so 62 66 we're at 128 meters per second for this entire rendezvous we got plenty so that's fine now if you find that you don't have enough you can actually save a lot by bringing this down let's bring it down to something a lot less like only 20 meters per second so now you can see that it, we're, we're not getting our rendezvous on this orbit but perhaps we'll get it on subsequent orbits I mean we are going slower and this guy's going to be catching up to us to find out what you do is you just put a maneuver out past the maneuver you just made out here on your new trajectory don't put anything into that maneuver and just simply hop ahead orbits. And notice that this is showing me what our close encounter is going to be on subsequent orbits. Oh, a few orbits and now we're close together. Now I can go back to my first maneuver by using the little previous maneuver button here. And I can now tweak this previous maneuver to get my encounter this way. And now if I look, I'm only putting in 21 meters per second into this maneuver. I'm getting my encounter here and it's only 28 meters per second for our encounter speed and now this whole thing is only costing me about 48 meters per second, 49 meters per second if I add those two numbers together and this is saving me quite a bit of fuel. Now it does mean that I'm going to take more time to get there, it's going to take me 3 hours and 14 minutes but you know that's what time warping is for so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do it this way. I'm going to tweak this down a little bit more and this burn's coming up in just 13 and a half minutes so Let's get ready to do the burn here. Again, I'm going to go about half throttle there. I've used this approach information in the past to judge when to stop these drift burns, but here that's not going to work because the approach is several orbits in the future. So I'm going to actually do this strictly by the maneuver node. That's good enough. Close that. See, it's not giving me my right intersect. But let's go to map view and let's put our dummy node back in there. For some reason it disappeared. Sometimes this dummy node doesn't disappear. But what the game will do is as you're doing this burn, it corrects any kind of over or under burning that you did with the second burn to keep you in the same trajectory. That's not particularly helpful. So what we're going to do here is actually I'm going to put this burn right there because we might have to do some further tweaking. We're going to pop ahead orbits again until our close encounter indicators are very, very close together. Then we're going to click on that so we can see our separation and we're going to do some very tiny adjustments. Oh, well, again, I need to pop ahead a second. Does that sometimes and pop ahead in orbit? Nope, back in orbit now. There it is. Okay. And now we'll just tweak this get that close encounter really small so this is a burn that's on coming up in two hours and 13 minutes it's teeny tiny virtually nothing um, and it will get us our encounter in the orbit after that okay but we got ourselves a couple of hours of waiting so this is a perfect time for Banditu to collect the rest of that science that is still sitting in the equipment. The last thing you want is to leave some of that precious science behind. And we're going to collect it all and store it all into that lander can. And don't forget to get the crew report that's in the lander can. That is an easy one to forget. But let's get Banditu back here and store all this stuff back into the lander can. We can either right click on here and store the experiments or just simply boarding will store the experiments. And now all you want to see review stored data. You want to see all of it there. You don't want to see a review report anywhere. If I click on any of this stuff, nowhere does it say review report. If you click on something and there and it says review report, that means there's science in there. You need to collect that. Now all the science is in one spot. Again, we'll make sure to get that into our command vessel. But right now, well, we got ourselves a maneuver to perform. Now that we are on the same orbit, I can use those. I'm just going to keep burning while that intersect distance is still going down. 200 meters. Oh, that's about it. 138 meters. Awesome. Give myself a little more thrust. 
And we're going to be meeting up with them in about 44 minutes. And the rest of this rendezvous is exactly the same as all the rendezvous I've done in this series up until now. So I'm not going to go over the details of that again. And then we need to dock these two vessels together. Something else I have talked about in the past, so I'm not going to go over it in detail here. However, the vessel we're on, the lander, does not have any RCS. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it the passive vehicle in all of this. So I'm going to reduce my target velocity right down to almost nothing. And then we'll dock with the command vessel. And boom. Okay, there we are. We have now docked. We got to get not only Banditu over to here, but we also have to bring over our science in order for that Banditu does have to EVA just one more time. We're going to right click on here. We're going to take all of that data, let go, RCS, and we're going to bring it down to here. Unfortunately, this capsule is uh, got a Kerbal in it, so what I can only do is store in here. Then we'll go back up, and then we'll just transfer him over. And before doing that, we'll have to make sure to give him his parachute back. But now with everybody aboard the command vessel, let's start thinking about how we're going to get ourselves back to Kerbin. So, how do we get ourselves back to Kerbin? Well, actually, in a way, it's kind of similar, like think about it this way. We are now in orbit about the moon. The moon itself is in orbit about Kerbin. Let's imagine the moon wasn't here and we're just in this orbit about Kerbin. How would we get ourselves down to Kerbin? Well, we would need to lower the periapsis of our orbit down until it is in Kerbin's atmosphere. How do you lower the periapsis of your orbit? Oh, by burning retrograde relative to this orbit. So we need to burn retrograde, which is we're going in this direction. That means this direction. Now, how do we end up going retrograde relative to this orbit? Well, it means that we have to eject ourselves from the moon in this direction. So how do we get ourselves going in this direction now that we are in orbit about the moon? Well, what we do is we put a maneuver around on the opposite side and give ourselves some prograde. That gets us going out of the moon in the direction that we want. We are exiting the moon's SOI going in a retrograde direction relative to the moon's orbit around Kerbin, which is bringing down our periapsis. If you want to bring down your periapsis further, you do more prograde. And I like to bring this down to about 35 kilometers. I find that works very well for using the atmosphere to slow us down and get descend down to the surface. Now, the timing of this is not perfect. I just generally threw this here. Don't be afraid to, you know what, I'll use the time tools. Let's put it at 10 seconds. So for instance, if I move forward 10 seconds, notice that that actually, let's go 30 seconds, 20 seconds. <laughs> As I move forward in time, notice that continues to bring down my periapsis, at least for a little while. So don't just play around with the prograde, also play around with the timing so that you'll use the minimum amount of burn to get your periapsis as low as you can. That's pretty much it. A little bit more and the prograde department and there we go, 34.9 kilometers, that is working out perfect lay and that's a 272 meter per second burn that's going to do everything we need to get ourselves home one last thing i want to show before we do this is if you want to make sure that you will not run back into your lander you need to perform what's called an avoidance maneuver and an avoidance maneuver is very very simple what you do is you time warp yourself until you are on the opposite side of the body from where you want to make your maneuver so that is going to be about here. Then we're going to undock from our lander. And in another half an orbit, we're going to be making this prograde burn. So we want to make sure that the lander is going to be behind us so we will have no chance of driving into it. The way you do that is by right now putting yourself onto retrograde, the opposite of whatever your burn is going to be. And burning a tiny amount, an emphasis on the word tiny, in a retrograde direction. This will lower your orbit on the opposite side, 
which will speed you up, which means the lander will end up behind us. Now by tiny, I mean so tiny that I'm not going to use the engines, I'm going to use RCS. So all I'm going to do is just give a little push the H button here. And that's all I need, just like that. It's a tiny little maneuver. And now watch what happens to our lander here as we go away. Now right now it's moving ahead of us because I did slow myself down a little bit. But as what you're going to find is as we get closer to our maneuver, it's now we're not only we're going below it between it and the moon because we did lower our orbit a little bit, but now it's starting to drift behind us. See that? And so now there is zero chance we're closing in to when our maneuver is going to be. Let's stop a minute or so before. Now that we're about a minute and a half from our maneuver, notice it is behind us in our orbit. We're going to point towards the prograde and we have zero chance of running into our lander. So a tiny little adjustment at the or a half an orbit ahead of our maneuver made it so that it is impossible for us to crash into our lander. And as we close in on this, I like to watch this from Kerbin's perspective. Oh, let's slow down. Here it comes. And we'll click on our periapsis and I'm just going to look at that and get it down to 35 kilometers, not even paying attention to the maneuver node. Oh, I overdid a little bit. We're going to use RCS to kind of back off. Pushing the end button. There we go. We are on our way. And from here on in, there really is nothing for us to do other than to enjoy the ride. And while these folks say goodbye to the moon, why don't I take this moment to go over the main takeaways from this episode? We looked at how to achieve an orbit from an airless world and recognize that getting over towards the horizontal as quickly as is safe is the way to go. We then looked at performing a rendezvous, even when the timing of the ascent is less than ideal. After which we explored how to return back to Kerbin, the central idea being to eject yourself from the moon's SOI in a retrograde direction relative to the moon's orbit about Kerbin. And finally, we looked at how to perform an avoidance maneuver, a simple technique that avoids the possibility of running into something you just undocked from. And with that, I'm going to be drawing this episode to a close. But I will be returning to the moon again next episode, this time armed with a lot of new tech that I will unlock with all this science I've collected. I hope to see you then.